Hey, my name is April, and I'm the peaceful wife and the peaceful mom, and I invite you to be peaceful in Christ, too. Before I get started, I want to let you know that my grandmother, who was 98, did pass away on June 8th, and we had her funeral and celebrated her life the next week, and then this morning we buried her ashes in the cemetery, just my parents and me and my son. So there's been a lot of emotions. We are grieving, but we are also so grateful for her life, the long life she had, and also the fact that she is in heaven now with Jesus is such a joy and comfort and blessing. Today I'd like to talk about that a number of prominent women recently have been talking in the mainstream media, this includes college professors and various women, about that they believe that women should hate all men, that men are evil, that men have mistreated women, and there have been many times when men did do terrible things to women that were just awful and inexcusable. And there are examples of men who raped women, who killed them, who sexually abused them, Um, those things are wrong and horrible and no one should ever be treated that way. It is extremely wrong for men to hurt women. God hates violence, rape, abuse, murder, and every kind of wrong that men may commit against women. Of course, God also hates every kind of wrong women may commit against men too. As women who profess Christ, what are we to do? Is hatred really the answer to the problems we are facing in our society and in our families? Let's go back to the truth of scripture, my sisters in Christ. That is where we find absolute truth. There are some basic truths in scripture about these topics, about hatred. We are supposed to hate certain things, Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. But the Bible also says things like, in 1 John 2.9, Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in the darkness. 1 John 2.11, But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 John 4.20, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And about love, the Bible has a lot to say about that, but we're going to just hit a couple of things. First of all, Matthew 22, 36-40 has the two greatest commandments. The first one is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In John 14, 23 through 24, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. And 1 John 4, 8 says, Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. There are also some verses about eternal life relating to somebody that hates their brother or sister. And when the Bible talks about hating your brother or sister, it's talking about hating another person. 1 John 3.15 says, Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Jesus in Matthew 5, 21 through 22 said, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, You fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. Revelations 21.8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, which is people who put other things or people before God in their hearts, 
and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So the issue is not men are evil. The issue is people are evil, men and women. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that falls short of God's holiness, perfection, and glory. It's anything that deviates even slightly from his goodness and his perfect will. We have all sinned against God and against other people. Not just men, not just women. We have all fallen short of his standard of holy perfection and we are in desperate need of the Savior. God hates sin and evil. We should hate sin and evil too. God hates sin so much that in his holiness, righteousness, and justice, he cannot tolerate any sin at all in his presence. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. That is why we all, as sinners, on our own cannot enter heaven and we are condemned to hell if we don't have Jesus. God doesn't want us to go to hell, though. He longs for us all to be with him in heaven forever. He loves us so much. So God had to come up with a way to deal with the sin that he hates so that he could separate the sin from us and have the chance to be with the people he so dearly loves. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you do not know Jesus, please go to one of my blogs, peacefulwife.com or peacefulsinglegirl.com. Up at the top, there's a post, How to Have a Relationship with Christ. I invite you to read that. This is what the cross of Jesus is all about. It is where the mercy, grace, and love of God meet the righteousness, holiness, justice, and wrath of God against sin. This is the only way to salvation. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed and begged God if there is another way. If you can let this cup pass from me. But there wasn't another way. This was the only way to give us a way to be right with God. It is all about what Jesus in his holiness did for us. That we could not do for ourselves. He overcame our sin with his divine love, not with hatred. How humbling is that? He loved us enough to die for us, to rescue us when we were still his enemies and we hated him. People hating other people is not God's way. That's Satan's way. We all lose when we hate each other. Whether we hate an individual, a group of people, or one whole gender, or everyone on the planet, we lose when we hate people. We miss out on real relationship with people We miss out on intimacy with the Lord because it is impossible to hate people and love and be close to God. Our choices are we can either love God and love people or we can hate God and hate people. We should have righteous anger like God does when anyone is wronged. Men, women, the elderly, children, the unborn, the poor, orphans, and anyone else. We should all hate sin like God does. Sin is the thing to hate. We should seek to use our voices, our influence, our votes, our power to guard people from harm. We should seek to elect leaders who will enact laws that will protect the innocent and punish the guilty. We should seek to build governments that will protect all people from violence, rape, injustice, and abuse. And we should also address and confront sin in biblical ways, in our own personal relationships, and in our society. However, women hating men is not the answer to the problems in our culture or our families. It will only bring more heartache and more pain. And if men hate women, this will also not solve anything or accomplish anything good either. Hatred only brings more dysfunction, more division, more destruction, and hurt for everyone. Genuine repentance from all of our sins individually and our willingness to yield ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ is what will bring healing for us individually and it is what will bring healing for us as families, as churches, as the church, and for our society. Masculinity and femininity are good gifts from God. 
Masculinity is part of God's good design for us, and so is femininity. Masculinity in and of itself is not toxic, in spite of what our culture may say. Masculinity and femininity have become skewed because of sin. However, masculinity and femininity are beautiful and precious gifts that, when used rightly, point us to the image of God and to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need strong, godly men as leaders in our communities, churches, businesses, government, and families. Getting rid of masculinity, as some people propose to do today, will hurt everyone. Women, men, families, marriages, children, and society all depend on healthy, godly masculinity and femininity to thrive. Let's address the massive spiritual issues in our hearts, our sinful nature. That is what's toxic. That is what needs to die. If we seek to completely annihilate masculinity, especially God's design for masculinity, we will hurt our societies, our relationships, and children in ways that we cannot imagine. Romans 12, 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Men and women who know and love Jesus display the fruit of His Spirit in their interactions with others. His love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control are evident. When we have Christ-like people, men and women, who know the Lord, we will have real peace with God and with each other. We will treat each other with mutual respect, kindness, and unconditional love. Then our communities, schools, businesses, government, churches, families, and our world will be a safer place for us all. Thank you so much for watching. You can also find me at my blogs, peacefulwife.com and peacefulsinglegirl.com. And I hope you will choose to have a peaceful day in Christ.